Welcome students. In previous lecture, we discussed primary level of protein structure and we saw how this level has a profound impact on protein uh, function. We also learned how the uh, primary order of amino acid sequence could uh, has devastating impact if change uh, on not only the function of the protein but also the survival of the organism. Today we are going to uh, discuss secondary uh, organization of secondary level of protein organization which is the secondary structure. The secondary structure of polypeptide consists of several repeating patterns uh, and these repeating patterns normally uh, emerge as a result of hydrogen bond formation. Uh, most common secondary structures are alpha helix and beta pleated sheets and they uh, emerge as a result of hydrogen bond among the carbonyl oxygen of one amino acid and the amide hydrogen of another amino acid which is present in the peptide back bond. As we all know, uh, in peptide bond there are different um, uh, torsion angle present and like a phi angle which is between among the car alpha carbon and the nitrogen uh, and then the psi angle which is alpha carbon and the carbon attached next to uh, this carbon and this is the psi angle then there is a third angle which is in fact omega angle is not shown here this is the uh, normally the pept uh, peptide bond which is a very rigid bond so you see the the orientation of these angles uh, could affect the formation of these hydrogen bond normally when phi and psi angles are equal they could make uh, a hydrogen bond and as we as we have as we learned that the uh, peptide bonds are very rigid uh, only the phi and psi torsion angle uh, phi and psi torsion angle are important for uh, the formation of this secondary structure so the major survival point major fulcrum point on which this peptide bond uh, on which this peptide backbone could uh, 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 could make conformation is this um, phi, phi angle. So the phi angle is the major fulcrum point on which uh, this alpha helix structure uh, depends. Several uh, properties of R group such as the size and the charge of the R group could have an, a, a, a dramatic impact on the formation of phi and psi angle and in return it, they could impact on the formation of a secondary structure like alpha helix. So alpha helix is a rigid rod like structure which develop as a result of clockwise or right handed orientation, right handed twist of the polypeptide backbone and as a result of this right handed polypeptide backbone uh, first amino acid uh, the carbonyl group of the first amino acid could make you know, a hydrogen bond on the fourth uh, amide hydrogen and that is why this overall uh, you know, interaction is called 1 plus 4 hydrogen bond and 1 4 hydrogen bond and as a result of this interaction uh, this, this, this takes this peptide chain could take the form of a coil so this is uh, this is a coil structure and in this coil structure, the pitch uh, each turn of the coil consists of roughly 3.6 amino acid residues, and the pitch of the coil is roughly uh, 5.4 uh, Armstrong line. Uh, different amino acid uh, residues could have different uh, impact on the alpha helix formation. Some could favor the formation of alpha helix, other could. Uh, reject the formation of alpha helix. Uh, normally, uh, the proline, if present in the uh, primary structure, could uh, do not favor the formation of alpha helix because uh, of the uh, extraordinary structure of proline as a result of uh, the, the cyclic structure, uh, internal cyclic structure, because of the carbon and the nitrogen interaction. And second, it ha do not have a hydrogen bond, hydrogen atom present uh, available for the formation of this hydrogen bond. Moreover, uh, strong electrostatic, uh, strong electrostatic charge present on a minor acid side chains and strong uh, static repulsion such as on valine, isoleucine, threonine, uh, because they are bulky minor acid, do not also favor the formation of alpha helix. Uh, moreover, if glycine uh, is present in the 
polypeptide backbone it could also do not favor the formation of uh, hydrogen uh, alpha helix because uh, it has a small uh, it has it has just one uh, um, um, uh, hydro, hydrogen atom as a side chain and as a result uh, this backbone is too flexible to form uh, the hydrogen uh, too flexible to form uh, the hydrogen bond and thus the alpha helix many fibrous proteins such as alpha keratin is arranged in the alpha helical form and most of the globular protein contains segments of alpha helix secondly uh, so, uh, there is a, a second uh, repeating structure is the beta pleated sheets which are uh, unlike the uh, alpha helix uh, do not develop as a result of coiling of the chain rather the um, 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 rather the um, polypeptide backbones are fully extended and as a result of fully extended one polypeptide chain could interact to the other a neighboring polypeptide chain that is why these are called beta sheets and individual beta strand in poly in beta sheets uh, individual polypeptide chain in beta pleated sheets are called uh, beta strand uh, these beta pleated sheets could be parallel and they could be anti parallel as you can see here in parallel both the uh, polypeptide chains are in the same orientation that is from uh, carbon to uh, um, carboxyl and to amino and are the other or vice versa and in the entire parallel one is from uh, one is uh, oriented to the carb uh, to the carboxyl to the c terminal to n terminal and whereas the other is the opposite one as a result of this orientation as a result of this extension of polypeptide chain carbonyl uh, carbon of one amino acid could make a hydrogen bond to the parallel or the anti parallel amino and present on the uh, second beta strand and as a result again this is a hydrogen bond formation uh, what is important to note is that these hydrogen bonds are perpendu perpendicular to the uh, sheet axis uh, unlike the um, alpha helix anti parallel beta sheets are more stable than parallel beta sheets here is the example of beta pleated sheet. Uh, spider web is composed of mostly of uh, protein fibrin uh, and has a beta pleated sheet as a second structure. Many globular protein contains combinations of alpha helix and beta sections, and these patterns are called super secondary structure. The examples of these structures are given here. Beta alpha beta unit is a uh, it consists of two parallel strands of beta sheets connected by an alpha helix as shown here in uh, this figure A. Uh, in this figure A, these are the beta alpha beta units. Uh, beta minder are two entire parallel uh, beta sheets uh, separated by a polar amino acid or the presence of a glycine residue could make a short turn to the beta sheet and that is why it is also called a beta turn it is also called a beta turn alpha alpha unit are two entire parallel alpha helices separated by a loop or non helical structure as shown here in this figure c beta barrel are created when beta sheets uh, are extensive enough to fold back among themselves and give a, a barrel like structure as shown here in this uh, structure D in this figure D Greek key is a repetitive super secondary structure uh, formed when entire parallel sheets double back on themselves it may also refer to the Greek uh, decorative art uh, decorative art that is why it because it took the form uh, like a, a Greek key Here is a review question for you people. Uh, in this illustration, two uh, uh, polypeptide chains are shown. Uh, can you please identify what type of secondary and super secondary structures are present here? Please take a moment and try to identify.
this is the uh, uh, answer this is the key to the previous slide you can identify here in this area a beta amino sheet two entire parallel beta sheet separated by a non uh, a helical uh, separated by uh, non structural region uh, separated by this loop uh, similarly the greek uh, key could also be sh shown here this this region here is the beta alpha beta units where because two beta sheets are separated by an alpha helix structure here and in this polypeptide chain you can identify first these are the alpha helix which is shown here and these are two alpha alpha units as 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 are as are shown here so this is the review question as a and a exercise for you people so you could go home and try to figure out what type of secondary and super secondary structure these peptide uh, these polypeptides could make uh, it is a poly polyporolene it is polyglycine and alanine alan alanine valine valine alanine valine and different combination of different amino acids uh, try to resolve secondary structure of these peptides proteins before moving on to the third tertiary protein structure level we can we should know that the protein could be classified on the basis of their structure these could be fibrous protein these could be globular protein uh, why because the fibrous protein contain mostly the simple secondary structures as we have discussed in previous slides they are typically contain high proportions of alpha helix and uh, beta pleated sheets as a consequence of their rod like structure they are more uh, structural protein then uh, that then have any dynamic role examples of beta pleat uh, examples of fibrous proteins are uh, collagen silk fiber silk fibrin and alpha uh, keratin uh, as we have already discussed they they mostly consist of long fibers or long sheets uh, tend to be mechanically strong they are insoluble in water and dilute salt uh, di dilute salt solution play important structural role in nature on the other hand globular protein uh, have biological functions to perform these globular proteins usually involve a precise uh, binding a, a precise binding site uh, this just because of the folding of the protein uh, and they it has Yeah, most of the time the globular proteins are folded in a way that they take a specific form uh, which is required for the uh, which make a cavity or cleft uh, for the binding of ligand and these ligand are important non polar side chains are normally buried inside in this globular protein whereas the polar side chains are outside the globular protein uh, the example of globular protein is the myoglobin protein Uh, and this, uh, we have already discussed myoglobin protein this is the folding pattern after the folding of this secondary structures and uh, and and they give rise to this cleft this give rise to this crevice where iron can be bound this is the uh, tertiary and and this is the tertiary level of protein structure which we are going to study next